kids. How are you today? Look at this beautiful scenery. Are you ready to draw and paint it with me? Fantastic! Right, we're going to start by drawing the sun. It's easy, just a circle with some rays. Now some curvy lines for hills and a rainbow in between two of them. Let's do a tree. How about some fruit in the tree? Just some little circles. A boat. And a house with a triangle roof, a rectangle door, a chimney and some tiles. Some windows. Let's add in a river, some grass. And there you have it. We're ready to paint. Yellow sun, a blue sky. You can of course use crayons, colouring pens, pencils or paint, whatever you prefer. It's going to be a beautiful scene. OK, let's go for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, dark blue, purple. You can choose whatever colours you like, it's your picture. Stick to a traditional rainbow if you want. We're going brown for the hills. That's it. Lovely. One more to go. Going around the house. Done. Green tree. It's summertime, you know. Going around those fruits very carefully. We don't want to colour those in green. That's it. You're doing a great job. Well, I would love to live in a house like this, wouldn't you? with a rainbow and the sun is shining and there's a river, I've got my very own boat. Red fruit, what do you think it could be? Apples, fantastic. A brown tree trunk. Let's go for a lighter green for the grass behind the river. That's a great contrast to the brown mountains. We've got lots of brown and green. Going around the house, lovely. Wow, what a beautiful garden. Let's do around the tree as well, on the other side of the river. Let's paint the house. A yellow chimney top, yellow walls. Lovely. Hmm, let's go for red tiles. Excellent. And the edges can be blue, blue windows, and a pink chimney and door. Perfect. How about some yellow and pink for our boat? Blue for our river. Wow, that's lovely. It's a darker blue than the sky. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I've heard of once in a lullaby. It is absolutely beautiful. Maybe you'd find it at the end of a rainbow. <laughs> Dark green for our tufts of grass, just like the tree. And there you have it. Perfect scenery. Hey kids, this video is going to be so much fun. We're going to draw and paint a honeybee, starting with the antennae. Then the oval shaped body and of course the stripes and the wings. Did you know that a bee's wings are actually so small, technically it shouldn't be able to fly? How amazing! Right, let's paint. Starting with black for the antennae and every other stripe. Do you know what a bee's antennae are used for? They're used for communicating. Isn't that amazing that bees communicate with each other? Right, we've gone for yellow next for the face, painting around those eyes. And of course, the remaining stripes will also be yellow. Gorgeous. We painted the sting black already and we're going for the wings. Blue for the wings. 
if you paint diagonally from side to side, you can paint more surface area faster. Good little tip for you. See, we're not going in straight lines up and down or side to side, we're going diagonally. Almost there, you're doing a great job. Yes, and we are done. That is absolutely beautiful. Hello, oh look at this beautiful flower. Do you know what it is? That's right, it's a tulip. One of my favourites. Let's start by drawing the facial features. Eyes, mouth, eyelashes, a teardrop for the inner petal, and two on either side, a stalk, two leaves. Darkening up the border. Very easy to draw this flower's shape. Ready to paint already? Okay, let's go for a pink. A beautiful pink tulip. But you know tulips can be all different colours, so you can paint your favourite colour if you like. Or use your imagination. Why not do a rainbow tulip and paint each petal a different colour? Green leaves and stalk. That's right, almost done already. And voila! And if you want to paint lots of these, you could make a whole field of tulips just like this one. Look, there's even yellow ones in the background and a windmill. Ooh, brilliant. Go on, give it a go. Hey kids, do you love sunflowers? I do too. Let's draw one. Yes. Start with the eyes and little oval shapes for rosy cheeks. Half circle for a mouth, a big circle for the head, and of course, let's not forget the petals. These are gorgeous teardrop shapes, and we're layering them. And a stem, and some leaves. Darken around the border, like a zigzag. And the leaves and stem as well, ready to paint. Okay, we're going for yellow, of course, because it's a sunflower. Let's do every other petal. We can do a different shade in between. Perfect. Going for the slightly darker yellow here, almost a golden colour. That looks really cool. Yay! Now the face. Let's go for brown. Going around the eyes around the cheeks and the mouth, almost there. Done! Let's go for a pink rosy cheeks and mouth and a green stem and leaves. Brilliant! There you go! That was easy, wasn't it? Well done! You made a sunflower and it is beautiful! Hi kids, how are you today? Let's draw and paint a ladybug, starting with the round eyes, a smile and a big round face, and some rosy cheeks, and the antennae. Lots of circles here, the body, don't forget the spots, see, more circles, you'll be an expert, and the leg, cute little feet, hmm, how many should we draw? How about six? Perfect! Ready to paint. Start with black for the antennae and the face. Carefully going around the eyes and the rosy cheek circles. Gorgeous. That's it. Almost there. And done. The feet and the spots. Nice and easy this one because we only need a few colours. Brilliant. Last one. And let's go for red. Red for the main body. Carefully painting around those black spots. If you use a small tipped paintbrush to go around the edge of the circles, that will really help make it easier for you to shade in all the rest. Side to side. That's it. Excellent. Keep going. You're nearly there. 
Oh, this is looking lovely. And we're done. Rosy cheeks. Ta-da! See? Black and red. Ladybug. So cute. Hey kids, how are you today? Let's draw and colour in a zebra. Starting with the eye and eyebrow. Doing the outline with the ear and the back. Going onto the legs and the hooves. That's it, just copy us. The nose and the mane and the other ear. Tail and the back leg. There you go. Now we start to add our detail and stripes. First on the mane and then on the body. If this video is going too fast for you, you can always pause it or even rewind. You can do your stripes however you like. Long rectangular shapes, simply the stripes or even some long triangles. A bit curvy on the legs. Skipping out the hooves and there you go, we're ready to paint. Black for the stripes and the nose. Even black and nostril. And every other part of the mane is black. And of course, in between those lines that we just drew. Leaving a white gap in between each one. Lovely. Have you ever wondered, is a zebra black with white stripes or white with black stripes? We're going for black on the tip of the tail and also the hooves can be black. Almost there, one more leg to go. And we're done. And there you have it, a cute zebra. Ah, oh, I want to see one now at the zoo. Hi, today we're going to draw and paint a rose, a beautiful flower, starting with the stem and the leaves, drawing the veins on the leaves. We're doing several leaves and then we start with the petals, nice curvy petals, one by one, at the top and the side, making our way to the middle and then a little fold in the centre. And let's not forget the thorns, yes, roses have thorns. Right, let's go for a red rose. Of course, roses can be all different colours. Have you ever seen a rainbow rose? Oh, they're so beautiful. But red roses are probably the most popular and famous all around the world. Why? Because they are a symbol of love. Yes, you can give roses to your loved ones. Just mind the thorns. Green leaves, of course, and stem. And if you like, you can draw your favourite flower. You can find a picture on the computer or in a book and perhaps try to copy the shape. And a rose is so easy to make. And there you have it, a gorgeous red rose. You did it perfectly. Well done. Rawr, I'm a tiger. Want to draw and paint me? Yay! Let's start with the outline using a black pen. We're doing from the front foot up the leg to the face and the ears, the back and the tail, and then down. Let's start the legs from the back, leaving some spaces for the claws on the paws. And now we're adding the claws in. Doing different sized claws to show perspective. Brilliant. Now for some finishing touches. Separating the feet from the leg. The belly. And the facial features. Now we're going to do our tiger stripes. Three on each side of the face and then along the back and the tail. Lots of triangles to make our stripes. Some whiskers, don't forget it's a big cat. Right, ready to paint. Starting with black, we're going to do all of the stripes or triangle shapes and the nose. Nice and easy. A dab of paint on each. There, 
going for gold. We're going to do the main body of the tiger gold. Carefully painting in between the stripes, of course, and around the other facial features and the ears. Brilliant, well done. We're just leaving the nose area white, leaving the tummy as well. Leaving the feet as well. Then the rest of the back. And if you want, you can use pens or crayons or even pencils. It's all up to you. There, ready for some yellow for the inner ears and the nose where the mouth is too and the belly. So it's like a paler shade for those parts. We'll do the feet as well. Not the claws, but the paws. Wow, this tiger is looking really cool. That's it. Right, last but not least, we'll do brown claws. A little dab. One, two, three, and we're done. Excellent. Well done, kids. You did a fantastic job. Rawr. Hey kids, have you ever been to a zoo? Have you ever seen a giraffe? Look at that long neck! Shall we draw? We start with an oval shape for the head, not to forget the ears and the bumps on top of course. Let's do the eyes and the nose and mouth. Right, now for the neck and the body and legs. See, it's super easy to do. Some spots, the tail and we're ready to paint. Let's go for some brown for the top of our horns, pink for the inner ear, and yellow for the main part of the giraffe. Imagine if you were a giraffe, you would be super tall with that long neck. Imagine the view from up there. I wonder what they can see. I bet they can see everything. Do you know why giraffes have such long necks? Well, I think it is to reach their food, of course, because they eat leaves. Gold for the spots. And if you want to be really creative, you could do multicolored spots. Beautiful. And the feet. And let's finally do brown for the tail. And there you have it, a gorgeous giraffe. Go and eat your leaves. Bye. Hey kids, would you like to learn how to draw flowers? It is super easy and you can do it all different ways. Look, let's show you. First of all, you draw your centre, which is just a little circle, and then some nice oval shapes to form your petals. And there you go. That was easy, wasn't it? Let's try a different one. This time we're going to do a little cut in the middle of each petal, and they're a bit wider than the last one. There. Now for this flower, we're going to make the petals look like heart shapes. Perfect! This one has long, thin petals, just like a daisy. And we're doing a second layer as well. These petals are shorter and wider, with a lovely detail around the centre. So you can experiment with these different shaped flowers. Use your imagination and think how many different types you could draw. This one has more pointy leaves and two layers. Do you know how many different types of flowers have been found in the world so far? About 400,000! Can you believe that? All of them are different. So have fun with this, be creative, and experiment with different sized and shaped petals. Okay, I think we're ready to paint. Ooh, let's start with this one. Purple for the centre. Some lovely yellow petals. I have to say, this is one of my favourite colour combinations. Purple and yellow. Absolutely gorgeous, don't you think? Maybe you could name your flowers. Make up your own names. Do you know what the 10 most popular flowers are? 
Let's tell you, we've got the rose. You all know roses, don't you? They come in all different colours, but most famous rose is a red rose. And we're going to paint this flower's petals red. Lovely. We'll mix it up with a different colour in between because that will look very interesting. After roses, the most popular flower is the tulip. They also come in all different colours and they're absolutely gorgeous. Then you've got the sunflower, of course. Have you ever tried to grow a sunflower from a seed? I recommend it. They're amazing. They're yellow, just like these petals. Also very popular and a wonderful sign of the first beginnings of spring is the daffodil. I'm sure you've seen those around. They are gorgeous and they really cheer people up after a hard, cold winter. Then we've got the marigold. Again, they can come in you know, slightly different shades. And here we're doing a lovely red one with a yellow center. You can also do different shades of the same color. It looks beautiful. Daisies, of course, are very popular. Have you ever tried to make a daisy chain? A necklace or a bracelet or even an anklet out of daisies, making a little hole in the end of the stem and then just joining them up together to form a band. It's so much fun. The orchid is one of the most beautiful flowers ever that we love to put them in our windows on display. Carnations are also very popular. Gerberas, which come in all different colours, just like this one. And Jasmine. Jasmine has the most gorgeous smell. Let's go for yellow for the centre of this one and some purple on the outside. So it's like a backwards version of our first flower, which was yellow petals and purple inside. Let's carefully paint around our detail. There! Lovely. Hmm, let's do this one yellow in the middle. We've got a big centre point in this one and some pink around that. Excellent. What colour do you think we should do our second layer of petals? Should we do it the same or a different colour? Yay, blue! What a great choice! Blue and pink go really well together, don't you think? That's looking lovely. OK, let's do the next one. So we're going to go for gold in the middle. And green around the outside. Beautiful. It's like a little sun shining in the centre of a green field. Almost there. Excellent! Last but not least, let's do our long petalled flower. Green in the middle this time and pink petals. This one does look a bit like a daisy, doesn't it? It's just a different colour. Imagine if we had pink daisies, wouldn't that be wonderful? Flowers are just amazing and you can have loads of fun with this designing your own, even making up your own names. There you go! Now let's see them close up. Oh, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Wow. Let's see another. Oh, look at that. Those colours are just wonderful. Oh, I'm feeling like summer is here already with all these gorgeous flowers. Flowers really brighten up your day, don't you think? So if you haven't already done so, I recommend you get some seeds and plant them in your garden if you have a garden. And if you don't, it doesn't matter. You can just plant them in some lovely pots. Do be sure to keep them in the sunshine and make sure you water them daily as well because flowers need sunshine and water to grow. You'll be so excited when you see those little green leaves sprouting up from the mud. Now, which one is your favorite? Oh, it's so difficult to decide. I just love them all. Well done. You did a fantastic job drawing and painting these gorgeous glitter flowers. Hey kids, how are you today? Would you like to draw and paint a sparkly squirrel with me? You would? Brilliant. We'll start by using a black pen to draw the outline. I'm going to do a foot and the leg, the arm, fingers, tummy, 
Squirrel's holding a nut, so we draw that too. The other foot. Facial features. The eye, nose and mouth. The other ear. And finally, a big bushy tail. That's right, we've got to have a big bushy tail on a squirrel. Curvy lines. And done! Brilliant! Time to paint. Hmm, let's go with yellow first of all. We're going to paint our squirrel lovely and yellow. Look at that. I do say, Mr Squirrel, it looks fantastic with your blue eyes. Carefully painting with a small tipped paintbrush in between the black boundary lines. Painting the main body, so that's the face, the ears, the arms, the back, the legs. And, of course, the feet. You're doing really well, keep going. Almost there. Done! Going for gold. The inside of the ear, around the mouth and, of course, the nut. Let's do the tummy the same colour too. Excellent. Going for black this time. We're going to paint the nose. And then brown for the nutshell. Time for a colourful tail, starting with pink for the first segment. Our squirrel has a lovely stripy tail. Yes, what next? How about purple? I love purple. And purple and pink are like brother and sister, you know. They just go so well together. And done! Last but not least, we're going for bright green because it's really good to have some contrast, don't you think? Excellent! Well done, kids! You did a great job! Go on, go along and eat that nut. Yummy! Subscribe and watch more! Cheeky Art!